fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hi-O Silver, the Lone Ranger. Turn with us to the west of yesteryear when the Lone Ranger rode the plains and prairies in the cause of justice, bringing hope and courage to the oppressed and a warning that right makes might to the lawless. The early settlers of the western United States were faced with many problems. One of the most important of these was need for education for the many little boys and girls who accompanied their parents on the long covered wagon trail to the west. The Masked Rider brings us a story in which he plays an important part in establishing the Little Red Schoolhouse. From out of the pass come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver, old boy. Jim Hudson needs our help. We've got to hurry. Hurry, old Silver, away! <laughs> Jim Hudson had come from the east and had settled in the cattle country. He'd worked hard to build his log house, construct his line fences, and at last, the little spread which he owned began to pay expenses and a modest income. Our story opens early one morning in Jim's small ranch house. The young man bounces out of bed with a smile on his face and calls to his companion. Wake up, Dan. Get yourself out of bed there. This is the day that Mary gets here. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, that's so. I'll have the coffee and bacon going in just a minute. Get up and give me a hand. I gotta wash up the buckboard and curry old Ned. This is the day my girl's coming west. I don't know why you're so head up about it, Jim. Well, I haven't seen her since I left the east. Yeah, but she ain't said she'd marry you. <laughs> just your way. She's coming here because you wrote and told her she wouldn't be the school mom. Now what are you gonna tell her? Gosh, that's right. Don't play well that none of the young'uns from town will go to school. Well, give me that towel. Uh, just a minute. There. Dan, what makes old Silas Markheim so blasted ornery? He wants this land of yours because of the water on it. <laughs> that's easy, Dan. But what's that got to do with the school? Well, he knows you built the school almost single-handed. Done so just to get a job for Mary Stevens. <laughs> so as you could get her to come out here. What's wrong with that? She's a blame good school teacher, and the kids in town sure as blazes need some schooling. Uh-huh. Only they won't get it while you got any hand in it. Mark Hines a blame fool. He's too yeah, He's just fool enough to own most of the state and to have everyone in town owing cash to him. <laughs> he's just fool enough to be able to tell the folks in town that he'd sooner they didn't let their kids go to your school and, and have every last one of them follow his suggestion. Just because I won't sell him my land. Uh-huh. I can't sell it. Not at the price he'd pay. Wouldn't have anything then. I'd be right back where I was when I come out here. Reckon you wouldn't be as well off. Your land and stock ain't what it was then. No. We've lost a lot of cattle lately. Dan, do you think Mark Heim would be behind the dying off and rustling of some of that stock? That's a hunch I had all along. If I could prove that, I... Oh, I'd... don't make me laugh. 
No matter what proof you had, it wouldn't convince a jury made up of folks from town. Markheim owns that town. I reckon you're right. Sure I'm right. Come on, where's the grub? I'll pour your coffee. Then we got to get to work and get things ready to meet Mary. Yeah, reckon so. And Dan, there's something else. Well? Uh, if Mary would be willing to marry me... Oh, yeah, but that's guessing it a lot. Pass the bread. No. But uh, just supposing she would. Thanks. You see, then I... Well, this house is sort of small. Oh. Nice, Savvy. Want me to move out, huh? Well, I sort of figured you'd save up what I was paying you, Dan, and start out on your own before this. Well, how can a man save money out of what you pay? Well, if you hadn't been going to town every night and playing cards... Well, a man's got to have some fun. Fill up that cup again. No. After the East, I'd go loco here without something to pass the time in the evenings. Well, never mind. I'll clear out. You can have your place to yourself. Well, I hoped you'd sort of understand, Dan. She ain't said she'd marry you yet, you know. No, I know. But... It's my guess that when she finds there's no job here for her, she'll turn right around and go back east. If she don't, you might have some competition in winning her. Oh. What do you mean, Dan? Just that. I ain't had much to say, but uh, I always thought she was a mighty pretty girl myself. You? Why not? But you never said anything. What's the use of saying anything till the time comes? Well, come on. If you're going to get your horse in that wagon clean, we better get started. The stage is due at noon. It'll take some time to get to town. All right. Let's get going. We'll wash the pans later if there's time. Suits me. This is your affair and your ranch. I just work here. Dan, look over there. There's a horse on the ground. Well, sure enough. Well, come on. What's happened to That's us? Ned, your own horse. I see mine near the water hole. But it is Ned. Dan, he's done for. So it is. Like the old age guy. I don't believe that. This horse was poisoned or something. Same as all that cattle was. That's saying a lot, Jim. That means someone done it a purpose. Markheim again. Some more of Markheim's work. The horse is poisoned. I don't know who else would be doing it if it ain't Markheim. Of course, one way to get this land is to break you. And that's the last horse I had. Yep. Well, the only one is my own. And that's my personal horse. Ain't no reason I should use that for work on your ranch, is it? We'll have to take yours to go to meet Mary. Uh-huh. There ain't no other way to meet her if my horse ain't used, is there? No. Well, then, Jim, I reckon you can stay here and get the pots and pans cleaned, and <laughs> I'll go meet the girl. But, Dan, I... I told you that maybe you'd have some competition in winning her. <laughs> and that same starts right now, Jim. If she's to be met, I'll be the one to meet her. There comes the stage. There she comes. Quiet down, you blame fool. All of you, quiet down. Don't you make no rouse and welcome for that she-male friend of Jim Hudson's if you know what's good for you. Why not? Because Silas Markheim says not to. She comes here figuring to teach the school, and Markheim says there ain't to be no school. Now, break up the crowd and go on about your business. What's the matter with having a school here? What's it to you, stranger? This community needs a school. Well, it don't have one that Jim Hudson's got anything to do with. Not as long as Markheim runs this town. I think Markheim needs a talking to. Where is his place? Top of the hill, yonder. But don't try to tell him what to do, stranger, if you know what's good for you. We'll see. Come on, boy. Bag driver, I'll put it in the wagon here. Here you are. I'll help you down, Mary. You're sure looking right fine. Oh, what a nice compliment after such a dusty trip. <laughs> so this is the town. That's right. Now jump. There. Is that what? But where's Jim? That's sort of a longish story, Mary. I'll tell you while we're riding. Is he hurt? Oh no, he ain't hurt none. Is he all right? Why wasn't he here to meet me? I reckon because he was ashamed to come. Ashamed? Oh, I don't understand. Well, you will. When a man's lies find him out, he's in a sort of bad spot. Lies? Bad spot? Dan, what are you talking about? Uh, are you the school ma'am? Oh, uh, yes, I'm the new teacher. What's your name? Dick Markheim. This is Sally. Sally? What a pretty name. Are you Dick's sister? Uh-huh. But you ain't going to teach us. No? Aren't you going to the school? No. 
gosh. We wanted to go, but we can't. The Pa says there ain't going to be no school. Guess you'll go back east, huh? Dan, what do the children mean? She's pretty, ain't she? Oh, come on, Mary. Uh, I'll tell you all about well, she it. Let me help you to the buckboard. Our teacher. Ooh, well, I, well, help I... you go. There. That's it. Now we get started. It's a long ways to the ranch, and I'll go slow because you may not want to go there when you hear about it. Well, tell me. Get up there. Get up. There's a place in town where you can put up and stay with a middle-aged widow. Maybe that'd be the best thing, being as I aim to leave Jim my own self with the ornery trick he done. Dan, tell me what it is this instant. Well, it's kind of a long story. The truth is, Tonto, there's sort of a feud between Markheim and Jim Hudson. Uh, that right. Tonto here plenty in town. Everyone in town thinks exactly as Silas Markheim dictates. If Silas dislikes anyone, the rest of the folks dislike him too. That not right. I know it isn't right. It's keeping the children of this town from getting an education. Uh, There's a school building, a teacher, and plenty of children. And they can't be educated because of this ill will. You know, Hudson? I don't, Tonto. But I do feel that the man must have a lot that's good if he went ahead and built that school by himself. That right. That's why I'm going to call on Silas Markheim tonight. I came here to the camp to get you. I'm going to that ranch masked. It'll be safer if you come behind in case someone gets a drop on me. Uh, here, Silver. Ready, Kimosabe? Uh, be, be ready. All right, then. Come on, Silver. Come on. Let's go. How would you get in here in the first place? Your guards aren't very alert, Markheim. Well, if you want to leave alive, put down them guns. We'll have a talk first. What's your main objection to the school? None of your business. I've heard that it's simply because you dislike the man who built it. So you're a friend of his, eh? Perhaps I am. He's just the kind to have a masked man for a friend. I'll see you hung for throwing a gun on me. Let him, Markheim. Don't edge near that table. You go tell Hudson that I'm sick and tired of having him blame everything that happens at his ranch on me. Tell him I don't have to poison cattle and cut line fences. Did that happen to him? If you're his friend, you ought to know it. What's he mean by sending his man here to accuse me of all them things? I'll learn him. He's the one that needs a sight of teacher, not these kids in town. He needs learning that men around here don't do things the way he's accusing me of doing them. I tell you... Pa, I... what's that man doing? Dickie, get back. No, no, you can't shoot my pa. Stand back, lad. I won't. You can't shoot him. Now, mister, I got the drop on you. From the protection of that boy. Take that mask off, mister. I'll blast the daylights out of you. You know I can't shoot near you with that boy there. <laughs> so what do you do about it? The boy's not near the light. The lamp flashed you. Get out of the way, son. Get that lamp in the next room. All right, Pa. I'll get him. I'll fix him. I'll kill him. I'll blast it. Right. An easy chance to drill one of Hudson's friends, and I missed him. Here's the lamp, Pa. Missed him cold. Put the lamp on the table there, Dick, where the other one was. He didn't hit you, did he? No, son. But listen here. The next time you see your old man in trouble, don't you come mixing in, Savvy. But I thought... Dick, man to man, it's a downright insult for one man to mix into another man's fight. Do you know what you've done? What? Why, shucks. You just the same as told that hombre with a mask that you didn't think your pa was able to take care of himself. Don't you see? But pa... You made it an unfair fight. They was two to one. And that ain't right now, is it? I reckon it ain't. Now, the next time when you see something like that, you just keep out of it. And I'll do the same when you're beating someone man to man. Savvy? All right, Pa. I'll remember. What you got there? Nothing but a cartridge. I picked it off on the table when I set the lamp down. They ain't playthings, son. Let me see it. I... Hmm. I didn't think I'd left none laying around loose. I never seen one like this. It's sort of bright. It ain't like the ones we use. Hmm, curious. Dead red it curious. I wonder where it come from. Oh, it, it looks like, like silver. What are you biting it for? By thunder, it is silver. Silver. The stranger left it. The mask, the horse. Pa, what is it? Son, you and your pa was teamed up again, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Hello, are you sure he knew what that bullet meant? Not right. Him say 
A lone ranger. And you heard all that before you left the window? No. Uh, and Tato, that makes our work possible. He knows who I am. He'll be willing to talk the next time I see him. Not right. And that'll be in the morning after I've had a talk with Jim Hudson. Hi, old Silver! How are you? The curtain falls on the first act of our thrilling Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now to continue our story. After the Lone Ranger learned that Markheim had learned his true identity, he rode through the night with Tonto at his side and finally reached Jim Hudson's ranch. Oh, hold this, oh, oh, let's go. Oh, oh. Wait outside, Tonto. Uh, him there, inside window. I see him. Dan, what in the... Oh, you ain't Dan. No, take it easy. Don't slap leather. Max, who do you want? Who in the world? Sit down again, Hudson. So Markheim sent you to get me now, huh? No, he didn't send me. Was it Dan? He wouldn't have no reason to go that he far. He might, mightn't he? For what? I can't stand between him and Mary now. You haven't talked to her, have you? What's the use? I ain't no way of getting to town anyhow. Dan told me about the way she felt. I suppose she thinks I could have let her know Markheim wouldn't tolerate the school. Well, I just found out about it myself a few days ago. And there wasn't any way to tell her not to come here. No? I don't know why she won't give me the chance to explain. Jim, why did you accuse Silas Markheim of poisoning your cattle? Well, I didn't. I should have, but what's the use? I couldn't prove anything. You didn't? Well, no. But what are you here for, anyhow? Who are you? Didn't you send your partner to call on Markheim? Dan wasn't my partner. He worked for me. You came out here together, didn't you? Yes, but he lost his cash, so I gave him a job. Couldn't afford it, but he was my friend. I see. But he's left now. And you didn't send him to call on Silas? No. Why should I? What made you think your cattle had been poisoned? Well, I could tell. Find any footprints? No. The ground was all torn up from the cattle hoofs. Footprints of anyone that rode in wouldn't show. What else was done to you? Line fences was cut. When did all this start? A couple of weeks ago. Then when Silas sent a man to try and buy me out and I wouldn't sell, he got madder than ever. Said he wouldn't let no one come to the school my girl was coming here to teach. I see. Then yesterday, my last horse was killed. But I won't sell to that polecat. I'll stay here till I starve. He ain't gonna get my land. Have you ever talked to Silas Markheim? No, I ain't. Now, look here, mister. I answered all your questions. Suppose you tell me a few things. Who sent you here? I came here directly from Silas Markheim. But you denied that. I denied that he sent me here to shoot you. Jim... Suppose Silas had no part in the things that have happened here. But he did. Suppose he did not. Well, they happened anyhow. He won't stand for the school and Mary won't speak to me. You haven't tried to speak to her. I can't get to town. Yes, you can. You're riding to town with me. I ain't leaving this house. Yes, you are, Hudson, and we're leaving right now. I'm Come not... on. Take your hands off me. On your way or I'll have to rope you and throw you across the saddle. All right, I'll go. But if you're aiming to kill me, why not do it right here? I'm not aiming to kill you. Quite the reverse. What? I'm trying to help you live. Dan, quite pleased with the way things had developed, sat with Mary on the porch of the widow's cottage. You'll have to leave now, Dan. It's terribly late. I reckon so, Mary, but I'll see you tomorrow, won't I? I'll be right here if you come by. That'll be fine. I reckon we're going to be mighty good friends, ain't we? Well, I... I... Maybe more than friends. You never had much use for me back east. Well, I... Wonder who that is. I wouldn't know. Dan, I'll have to go in the house. The widow might not like you sitting here so late. It must be almost 11 o'clock. Hey, there was two men on that horse, and one of them's coming here. Looks that way, doesn't it? Mary, is that you? Oh, it's, it's Jim. What's he doing here? Mary. Good evening. Mary, you can't treat me the way you've been doing without listening. I don't know, Hudson, but it strikes me you've got a pack of nerve to think she'd treat you any other way. But I've got a right to be heard. Mary, I didn't learn that there wouldn't be any school until it was... Hudson, the girl don't have nothing to say to you. But I Jim, wanna... I do have something to say. If you'd written and asked me to come here and marry you, I think I'd have done it. I thought that much of you, but you didn't do that. 
You wrote making a lot of promises you couldn't keep. But I thought There's I... no teaching work here. But honey, Is I... there? No, not now there ain't, but Then there... I think there's nothing more to be said. There, yeah, now clear out of here. That ought to satisfy you. You've changed your style mighty sudden, Dan. Well, what do you expect me to do? I'm on Mary's side. Can't you savvy that? I savvy it all right. I wish I knew what sort of things you've been telling her. I'm going in the house now. Good evening, Dan. Well, good evening, honey. I'll be around tomorrow. Mary. <laughs> Seems you're mighty slow in understanding that she don't want anything more to do with you. Look here, Dan Lenham. You met her at the stage and had a chance to tell her a lot of things. Did you make her think that I knew all along that the school wasn't to be used? Why don't you ask her and see if she'll talk to you? He won't need to. Why, what We're the... all going to make a call. Who are you? Come on, Lenham, into that saddle. You're going with us. Keep him with you, Tonto. I'm going to do that. You get inside. Let go of me. You get up. There. Stop that. Up. What are you trying to do, knife me? What's the Yep. You let me go. You ride with me again, Jim. We can go and have a talk with Silas Markheim. A short time later in Markheim's home. Are you still awake, son? Now you better get to sleep. It's late as old get out. I can't sleep, Pa. Shucks, you're worried about that mask man to come here. I told you some stories about him. There ain't nothing to worry about. He's on the level, same as you and me. I, I know it, Pa. Now but... get to sleep so you'll grow up big and strong like he is. Come on, close your eyes, cowboy. Pa. Yes, yeah, son? I, I wish we was going to school in the morning. Now, never you mind about that. Someday we'll have a school here. I ain't no use for Hudson, but he did have a good idea. Maybe I'll follow it up. The, the teacher looked right nice. We'll talk it over in the morning. Good night. Night, Paul. Poor young'uns. They've been talking school for the past month. Dread it, why does Jim Hudson have to start that rumpus about me harming his stock? I can't take that sort of thing. Boss, yes, man, to see you. Huh? They was riding in. Come on, Tonto, bring the other one. You back again? Yes. Have you ever seen this man before? I have. You're the Hudson hired man. I ain't no more. What about this man? Well, I never seen him before. My name is Hudson. Oh, so you're the maverick that sends another man here in your place to charge me with poisoning your cattle. I did no such thing. You did so. You said that Markheim done it because he couldn't buy you out. I didn't send you here to accuse him of it. Hudson, I'm glad you're here. Because I want the chance to tell you that no man can accuse me of that sort of thing and get away with it. If you'd been out here long enough to learn gunplay, I'd have met you with hot lead, and it'd have been you or me. But you ain't. It wouldn't be a fair fight. So instead of teaching you a six-gun lesson, I'd just forbid the kids in town going to that school of yours. Just a minute. Hudson, what made you think that Markheim was behind the poisoning? Dan figured it that way. You didn't blame me for it. I ain't working for you no more. You can sell your own rows. I'm leaving. Not just yet. You're staying here until we get a few things straightened out. Markheim, suppose Jim did not send Dan to accuse you of those things. He thought it of me. That's the same thing. Suppose he thought it of you simply because this man convinced him that your men poisoned the water. Eh? Isn't it fair for you to believe that he was given the wrong impression? That he believes that you were misled? Well, with this I... man planning the whole thing? By thunderation, Dan, did you do that? Ain't nothing on me. There ain't no law against a man talking. Did you come here and tell Markheim I suspected him? You bet he did. And you told me Markheim poisoned the stock. Now well, then, Dan, just who did poison those cows? You ain't nothing on me. Answer that question, you squint eyed toad. You can't make me. By thunder, I'll make you. Oh. you. Did you poison those cows? Let me alone. Talk up, or I'll give you the worst beating a man ever had. Stop it. Hey, there. Oh, leave it be, Paul. It ain't right to interfere. Who's interfering? Go ahead, Hudson. Let's see you make him talk. Yeah. <coughs> oh. Take him away. Take him away from me. What do you know about that poison? Nothing. Talk, you pole cat. Oh, I'll talk. Just let me up. I'll talk. Come on, then. I done it. I done it. I wa wanted you to get to get Silas down on you. You poison cattle? Yeah, I, I done it. You lied to me about what Hudson thought? I, uh, well, Answer I, up. Yeah, I lied. And you lied to me about what Markheim was doing. You schemed the whole thing. I, yeah. Well, Markheim, I, I reckon I misjudged you plenty. I thought you'd done it because you were sore when I wouldn't sell my land. Hudson, you're a fool. I own over 5,000 acres of land. I was willing to buy yours if I could get it at my price. But when I seen you didn't want to sell, well, that's all there was to it. Well, then, then I reckon I'll... Here, shake hands. And leave that skunk here. I'll take care of him. 
Well, where's that mask man gone? Him and the Redskin slipped out during your fight. Well, I wanted to see him again. Gosh, maybe... Fix it with me for you to borrow one of the horses. Go on. Maybe you can catch him. Well, I, I will. Hank, you take care of this critter. Rope him near the corral in the morning. Me and I'll tend to him. Come on, polecat. Gosh, Pa, that sure was a swell fight. You get to bed. No, wait. Let me whisper a secret to you. Huh? Listen sharp now. Really, Pa? Gee, I'll get to sleep proud of <laughs> The next morning, Jim finally found the masked man. <laughs> Doggone, mister. I tried all night to catch up with you. You did? Well, I, I wanted to thank you for squaring me with Mark Hyde. That's all right, Jim. Isn't that your school right ahead? Yeah. Ain't much of a place, but I figured it would do for a start. Well, look. What's that wagon there? After we left Markheim's place last night, I think he got busy. There's two big buckboards, and neither of them is mine. No, they're both from Markheim's place. Well, there's folks inside the school. Hi, there comes Mary. Tell us, Mark, I'm explaining everything. Mary. Oh, I'm so sorry for what I thought. Jim, will you forgive me? But, but you ain't done nothing, Mary. But come Gosh. on. All the children in town are inside. Hello, Jim. You coming to school? The, the kid. Yes. And Silas brought Dan all tied up, and he's making him sit there, too. Hey, Jim. Come on and see your school. Markheim. You're going to use it? I'll jail the man that don't send his youngsters here. And my girls to have her job? Oh, why not? we got to have a school barm, ain't we? Here, stand aside, Jim. Let me be the first to ring that bell. <laughs> ring away. The first school in the county. Watch me call the young uns in. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.